talked about the rules, right? And this is a bit, this show, like all shows, are kind of examples of social contracts. And we've all heard of social contracts. Um, and my favorite example of a social contract, and I don't know if this applies in uh, Jersey, but a social contract, the best example that I can think of is a parking lot, okay? And a parking lot is a magical place because there's no laws in parking lots. I know there are laws. There are no laws in parking lots. It's a total free-for-all. Because the car, the, there's two parties in a parking lot. One is the car driver. And two is the person who was a car driver and will soon hopefully become a, par, a car driver or a shopper. And they have two very distinct roles. The walker is meant to walk predictably in any circumstance, no matter what, and be clear. The car driver is supposed to keep their eyes open the whole time. And that's what a social contract is, because really it's built on trust. That's the whole idea. Everything's about trust in a parking lot. You hope that no one is breaking that clause. Because if you're driving and someone walks really erratically, you're in big trouble. And if you're walking and you behave really erratically or a car is not paying attention, then you're in really big trouble. So this is really a social contract in its own way because we, there are two parties here, right? There's me, understand, and there's you all. And you have a pretty good, clear job and you've done great so far. Your job is to sit there and have showed up and great job. And we covered some other things. Please don't barbecue. Please don't throw things at me. Uh, please, you know, don't commit treason. There's, there's a lot of things that you're supposed to do, but basically, in seriousness, your job is to sit there and try your best, right? There's this, there's all sorts of stuff. If I had walked in here, not said anything, and just played, walked in, didn't bow, and went, not explained a thing, you might not have had a very good time tonight. But I'm up here really trying to help you get through it. And your job is to basically sit there and try your best to get what I'm, what I'm giving to you. And my job is to not do anything wild or in a, a wild in terms of leaving you behind or inappropriate or, you know, nothing crazy, right? That's basically my job. So I'd like to apologize to uh, Teresa, I'm so sorry you've uh, put your reputation on the line. Provost is here. You've hired me to do this. I'm about to totally destroy that social contract because I have some things to say. I am an artist and I have something to say. And I want you to know that um, if this is something that you may find incredibly irresponsible, hurtful, offensive, we live in very charged times. I, I, I really, truly sorry and I don't mean to harm you, but I have some things to say. And if they risk harm to you, please feel free to step outside while I give the program notes for this piece. This is a coconut, and I hate it. I hate coconuts so freaking much. And if you give me a couple of minutes to explain why, I hope that you two will join me on the anti-coconut crusade of my life. So let me, let me explain where I'm coming from. There's a few things that I hate about coconuts, and it's really important that you understand them. So first, let's take a look at this. There's, um, you know, I have a coconut. And I have found this coconut, and it was acquired at a grocery store um, by a wonderful faculty member of William Patterson University. And we can examine it. It's, this is a, like, it's, like it's hard, right? It's relatively heavy, yeah? You find them on the ground, typically. Coconuts are rocks, yeah? Like, and I want to be extremely clear. Brian K.M. is pro-rock. I think rocks are great. Please come to the show on Saturday where I will do a four minute piece about rocks. I think they're great. I want to be like, please don't leave here thinking that Brian KM is anti rock. But there's a few key characteristics that show that coconuts are different and therefore evil. So we'll take a look. Um, you can see, I don't know how well you can see, uh, most of the time I'm on ground level with the audience, so I, there's not like a barrier of me getting to you. Um, you can see, Coconuts are hairy. 
rocks are not hairy. And I can, you know, there's some skeptical folks in the back and they're thinking, oh, well, you know, I went into the, um, I went to the Pine Barrens near my house and uh, that was a shot in the dark, Pine Barrens near anyone's house? No, okay, oh well. Uh, it was a woods I knew in New Jersey. Uh, so I went to the Pine Barrens near my house and I went and out back and I found a rock and that had moss on it and that counts. No, that's not true. Moss is a wig, and you can take that attitude and get it out of my show. Coconuts are hairy. Rocks are not hairy. And maybe that's not a problem for you, but it is. Second thing of two, coconuts grow on trees. Rocks don't grow on trees. Maybe this doesn't trouble you. Maybe this isn't a problem. But I lived in Hawaii for five years while I was in the Navy. Folks, there is an entire industry in Hawaii and probably other places dedicated to the funding, training, financing, and planning of people to climb coconuts, coconut trees, and knock them down in a controlled environment so they don't kill people. Think about this. There's a whole industry to just prevent things from killing people. Jaws came out in the 1980s, was a movie about sharks killing people, and we nearly eradicated the entire species. Coconuts, they're just going every... You, you go on your vacation to Hawaii. You plan a big vacation because I've been outside here. You want to go to Hawaii, don't you? You, you go... You, you, you're walking under a coconut tree in Waikiki or whatever. A coconut falls and hits you at the inopportune time. That's not like, oh, my day is ruined or my afternoon is different. You have to go home. Like, you have some serious decisions you have to make if you got hit by a coconut. These are heavy, and they fall from great distance. And, like, there's no, there's no public awareness campaign. There's no one trying to eradicate the, the coconut. There's just some idiot horn player on stage complaining about them. There's nothing that's being, and they're so arrogant. There's, oh, they're so arrogant. Folks, so I'm on an international tour, and I, when I decide to go on tour, I have to buy a plane ticket. I need to be searched. I need to go through agricultural inspection, forcing a poor doctor from uh, William Patterson University to buy the next coconut because I couldn't get it through the first one. Do you think the TSA likes this? <laughs> the TSA hates this. And therefore, I hate this. Look at this thing. The TSA hates it. They're like, what's this? I'm like, oh, this is mute. That when I put it into my French horn and live electric, and they're gone, and I'm in a, in a room now. So, like, they're, they're so, they make me so mad. Because like, I go through all this stuff to go on these tours, and coconut, they just fall off a tree, and they roll into the ocean, and they float to Fiji, Africa, Australia. They don't care. Nobody's looking for them. Think about the ocean. The ocean is the most dangerous place in the world. Everybody's trying to kill each other in the ocean. Coconuts don't care, they just float. They do all the, I, I'm like shaking, I'm so upset. I, I, look, folks, I think coconuts are the scourge, awful, miserable demons of the universe. I wrote this tune about it. It's called The Arrogance of Coconuts. It's about how free and light and happy they must feel while they go about their evil coconut lives. I hope you like it. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much.